Welcome back to Frankie Off Grid and if you're new here, we're Carissa and Yuan and back in 2020 we moved from North Wales with our sausage dog Frankie and bought a small plot of land with an old granite stone ruin in central Portugal. Our plan is to turn this into a beautiful off-grid homestead to live a calmer, slower life and to grow our own food and make our own wine. Good morning everyone, welcome back to Frankie Off Grid or if you're new here, welcome. Today we are going to be working on the main garden it has been a little bit abandoned over the summer and needs a lot of love and yeah last week you saw us working on the well the priority project is getting that covered we're just waiting for some materials to arrive and yeah as we wait we get to garden So this is what we're working on today, it's lots of weeds, we've had a big delivery of donkey manure, we really want to meet the donkeys so we'll get that, the beds ready for spring and give some TLC to what's already growing here. Chickens are going to be absolutely chuffed with this. So this bed is actually doing better than I anticipated, which I'm really happy about. I have some perennial leeks 
that Gary, my plant dealer, gave me last year and they're all sort of multiplying. <laughs> uh, they had like one single leak that went to seed, I just kind of left it and now from the bulb there's lots coming up so that is quite exciting. These cabbages have all been in this bed for about a year and they're still producing. When the chickens escape they do come and attack the cabbages and then I've got some Egyptian walking onions and then our asparagus bed is in here too and it looks like we might get a few seeds on some of them. So yeah I'm really happy that it's kind of looked after itself. There was just a lot of uh, weeds and especially couch grass, I think it's couch grass. We've also got this wild citrus tree. It was, I think it was a lemon, but the lemon died. Um, but the rootstock is still growing, so I, I don't think it'll be something that we'd want to like eat the fruit from. Normally if it's a wild citrus they don't taste so good, but we're leaving it to grow for the shade it's going to provide to the garden. This, this bit's so exposed, we're going to build some structures for next summer I think. But yeah, we kind of platted it last year, so that's growing, but it's got some very vicious spikes on it. But yeah, not, not too bad at all down here. And this is why I like to hand weed because this I'm pretty sure are all uh, some self-seeded borage, which is brilliant for the garden. The bees love it, it's edible. So then there's a row of potatoes here, yeah. I'm going to say, um, but there's nothing growing here. So we could make this a new bed ready for the spring. So I don't know if you want to put cardboard down on it first. So I'll go and strip some cardboard or some plastic then. Planting these onion bulbs, which are ones we planted last year and just didn't get very big. So I've saved them to plant again and see if we have a bit more success. Right, we move on to this bed next. Get these calendulas looking happy, get these tomatoes out, see what's still surviving <laughs> in here. I've been leaving the chickens to roam the last few months because there's no real like little seedlings in the ground um, that they're destroying too much but we're going to have to do something about this now <laughs> there's three of them that are always escaping and eating all the cabbages Excuse me, Ali. Welcome in the garden anymore. So there's a lot of this weed growing here. This is called per purslane. Is that how you pronounce it? Anyway, it is edible and delicious. I'll leave a link below to an article about it because you always want to be a hundred percent sure when foraging, foraging things you haven't grown yourself but if you have this 
do not pull it all up I mean we have it everywhere so if I want to grow something here I probably will but um yeah high in omega-3s so and has like a salty sour almost citrusy taste yeah I use an app called PlantNet to help me identify things and I wouldn't 100% rely on things like that just try it you've got to be 100% before you eat something but all parts of this are edible and it's really yummy and this is another weed that I'm pulling up that is very hard to get out it's called knotgrass and it is also edible for vitamin C but it's taking over so it's coming out but I don't know why it's called knotgrass maybe because the roots <laughs> are like knots in the ground to be honest though, it is getting a bit too hot in the sun. Our um, kitchen thermometer is saying it's about 44 in the sun. I like to have one in the sun so I know what I'm exposing myself to. And the dogs have taken themselves inside, which to me is always a good sign to uh, get in the shade as well. I'm going to go have a shower because I've sweated a lot this morning. I'm covered in mud and we have a lot of chores to go do. We said in the last video that um, we had some issues with our car, so we've not been out for five days apart from yesterday we went up to the garage if you're a regular viewer you know we, we really have bad luck bless you with the uh, cars but anyway we've not been out for ages so we've got lots of chores to do so we'll take you along we need to go get some drinking water go and do some laundry get a bit of a food shopping and then once it cools down we'll be back in the garden all the chickens the chickens are out again Hello. We are home and it is still pretty warm. So what I've been doing uh, in the afternoons is I've set myself up a little desk in here amidst the wine brewing, which I'm not sure if if that's safe. <laughs> Definitely makes working easier as so I'm inhaling all the fumes. But yeah, I need to hang up the laundry, but I'm hiding from the sun a bit. So I'm gonna sit in here and do some drawing, I think. Um, and this feels like a smooth transition into telling you about today's sponsor, which is the wonderful Squarespace, who we've worked with for many months. And yeah, we absolutely love them, so. If you've not heard of Squarespace before, then they are a brilliant all-in-one website building platform that empowers individuals to create an online presence through easily building a beautiful website. I've mentioned a few times that I'm working on a new online space for my illustration work called Calm Lines, and I've been building a new site for that with Squarespace. I've really enjoyed working on pulling the ideas out of my head and onto the site and one of my favourite features to work with is their editing interface Fluid Engine which makes it easy to make any adjustments to each page. You can add video blocks as well as text, audio and images and you simply drag and drop to position everything to make them sit exactly how you like. 
If you've never created a website before and feel a bit overwhelmed by it, then you can choose one of their beautiful award-winning templates that will help you achieve a sleek and professional looking site, even if you don't have any design skills. And as your confidence grows, you can then personalise each template to your taste, such as changing the font or the colour palette. Calmlines will include a print shop, so I'm grateful that setting that up using their commerce feature has been a smooth process. Whether you're selling a product, a service, or content you've created, or your time, it's quick and easy to get an online shop up and running. You'll find a link to squarespace.com in the description below, which you can head to for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain by going to squarespace.com forward slash Frankie Off Grid.
What have you got there, sausage dog? Thank you. No, you're not having it either. Stop taking socks. <sighs> Good morning. <laughs> I am just working on editing this video. Yuan is out and uh, our laundry is still out from yesterday. <laughs> I just saw Frankie sneaking across the bit of terrace here up to the stand where our laundry is drying and she has picked off a sock excuse our laundry from down here and she takes them and she buries them and we have a sock issue in this house because none of us ever have any socks and whenever I'm digging in the garden I pull them up and Normally it's you just have to be careful like if you take your socks off outside or in the in the house you cannot leave them <clears throat> on the floor because they will disappear. But to see her taking our clean laundry off the line to go and bury it is just <laughs> really tickled me. I'm actually slowly working on an idea I have for a kid's book about uh, Frankie and her socks. It makes me chuckle a lot, but <laughs> she's so funny. So funny with socks, like what a strange thing to be obsessed with. It first happened when we were climbing, when we lived in the van for a bit and we were in Fontainebleau in France. It's a big climbing area and it's quite sandy. And you would take off his shoes and socks, put on his climbing shoes, go climbing, and then come back to put on his shoes and um, we would never be able to find his socks and we'd have to like dig in all the sand to find them and um, yeah there are, there are socks everywhere in this land and then on our feet so we, we're constantly having to buy socks <laughs> and I think Diogo's picked up on it and he started stealing them and just before I get back to editing I'm going to make myself a crumpet I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you to Tony and Helen who we met the other day who bought us not one packet of crumpets, one's already gone, not two, but four, and the other two are massive, I've put them in the freezer, if, you've, if you're new here, these are my obsession. It's a six pack, no it's not, it's a nine pack, so there are many many crumpets in this house, and if you don't know what a crumpet is, you're missing out, they're like the butter sponges. They're delicious and yeah, I'm going to use them as fuel for work. A huge, huge thank you to you guys. We also got some uh, baked beans from them. British cuisine is mocked across the world and I don't know why. I mean, we have crumpets, baked beans, cheddar cheese. <laughs> yeah, lots of great things that, that we do miss a little bit. Uh, so yeah, really, really, really grateful to have people bring us crumpets especially.
courgettes. Crazy. What am I gonna do with all of these? So a few weeks ago, uh, I was sorting out the raised beds ready for autumn and these courgette plants had survived the summer but hadn't produced anything and then they started producing really small courgettes that would just shrivel up and I posted on our Instagram stories should I just rip them out and the pumpkin plant as well was doing the same and I think it was quite close but m the majority of people said leave them in let them grow <laughs> and this is proof that if you can get your courgettes and pumpkins to survive the summer leave them into the autumn and you will be rewarded with an absolute abundance there's more courgettes coming this one's almost a pumpkin i don't know maybe i'm gonna make a cake yuan makes amazing courgette soup so we'll be having that put some in the fridge. They do seem to survive for qu quite a few weeks once picked. I <laughs> uh, forgot to pick him and I uh, just got a big, big bum. But yeah, I'm chuffed and we're going to get some pumpkins too. So yeah, very, very happy about that. been a very very warm day today. The beginning of September was very wet and cold and it's kind of a shock to remember <laughs> that um, it can be this hot, it feels like summer has come back again. But I'm just walking over to the pear orchard. Our good friends Luke and Sarah came over on the weekend to collect some pears. We made it an excuse to all get together with Nick and Andrea from Project Portugal as well. So we had a little barbecue um, at ours and then picked some pears, which shows me, because I don't go over here very often, and I completely forgot that in the summer, or at the beginning of summer, I planted a load of watermelon plants over here. And most of them died through the summer heat and the fact that I probably didn't come over here enough. And yeah, when we were picking pears, I noticed <laughs> that one of them had survived. So I'm taking it a bucket of water now because it's been quite dry this week because there are two melons on it. So you can probably hear how crunchy the ground is. Hopefully you can hear me. The dogs are coming. So I actually planted, I think, nine plants here and this is the survivor, so we've got one there. Still fairly small for a watermelon. A teeny tiny one here, but I'm hoping there's just enough warmth left and that no vole's gonna come and chew it up before it survives. So we might actually get a watermelon this year. So just noticed 
necklace is blossoming. I'm not too sure what it is. <laughs> I think it could be a pear shooter. Maybe the others are blossoming. But yeah, our pear trees are so abundant. We lost a few branches to the amount of fruit on them. This year for this tree has been incredible and we really need to do something with them all. So I might pick a few whilst I'm here because they take a few days to sweeten. But yeah, Luke and Sarah feed them to their gorgeous piggies, Maggie and Pepper. So it's really nice to make use of them. They took two big buckets just of all the ones that had fallen on the floor. So yeah, we got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of pears. And there's another thing I need to update you guys on, is George the Kitten. We found his original home, who is one of our neighbours on Reek. He lives like three plots of land over from us. And he bumped into our friend Thomas, who told him we'd found a cat. So he messaged us to say, is it one of these two? And it was George and his brother that he sent us a photo of. So... Yeah, we're really happy that he's back in his original home, but I really miss him. <laughs> There's a big hole in my heart. So we filled that hole with six more chickens. <laughs> Not really, that's not the reason we got chickens, but I do really miss George. Uh, actually, we, since we got Virgil the rooster, we had five hens when we got him, and I think it's actually, sorry if this light's too bad, let me just sit down. <laughs> we actually read that it's not really enough for a rooster to have just five hens, because he's kind of over romancing them <laughs> is that a way to put it yeah he's mating them too much and they're looking really scraggly like they're losing a lot of their feathers i don't know if they're also molting at the same time but anyway it's better to have more like 10 to 1 rooster he agrees so yeah so we had a loose plan that we were gonna get maybe five more hens and then Yuan was in Agriloja, which was one of the agricultural shops last week. And I, w I was with Gina, our friend Gina, from OK Portugal, uh, also in Castelo Branco at the same time. And he messaged me just saying they've got a huge variety of different hens in Agriloja. And we'd always said we wanted to get a bit more variety. So he came and picked me up. And uh, yeah, we bought, well, we were supposed to buy five. One of them was the... One of them was an escapee that was running around, so we're like, we'll have, we'll have her. She's, she's cheeky. May have been a bad idea because she's already escaped with the three that currently escape. Yeah, I think our fence just is a little bit slack and they can jump over it, so I'm not, I'm a bit hesitant to, but I think we just need to clip their wings, which doesn't hurt them. It just um, removes their flight feathers so that they can't get as much traction up in the air, but I don't really like to do it because I think it makes them safer from predators, but they're less safe from predators if they're <laughs> running around the land without us knowing because we let them free range but when we're out uh, and can keep them out of the garden as well so. so we need to work on that so yeah we got the five and then they've got these grey ones and there was like a dark grey and a light grey and the girl in the shop was like which one do you want I was like oh I don't know they're both beautiful so she was like take them both doesn't take much to convince me so yeah we have six new hens if you're new here and you don't know our chickens have pretty wild names and I always let my niece Olive name one when we get a new flock and make sure to unlike and unsubscribe to Carissa <laughs> and definitely don't comment subscribe to me and like to me bye so the first one she named was Isabella Izzy 
think that's a great hen name. Unfortunately, Izzy died uh, just in her sleep. She's the only chicken we've ever lost. We've been really lucky, we've never had any predators, but yeah, she just randomly died one day. So that's when we went and got two more and asked Olive to name one of them. And she chose baby Gareth this time, so that's Gary. And our other hens are all named by Yuan after Liverpool players, apart from my named one, Alicia, after a good friend of mine. That's the only one I've been allowed to name, Ali which I think he also claims is one of the football, one of the Liverpool teams, I don't know which one. Obviously we've got these new six, and I've assigned one for Olive to name, the others are football players. And this time she's, she's quite outdone herself. This poor hen is now known as Voldemort. Yes, <laughs> we have a hen that shall not be named. Poor, poor hens. <laughs> Kids are brilliant, aren't they? Like, it just keeps life more interesting. Anyway, I am really rambling here. So yeah, Yuan's still out. He's been helping a friend of ours, Andre, who's a winemaker and kind of a bit of a mentor for Yuan, which is brilliant. It's so amazing that we uh, we have met him. I imagine he's having a very good day. I think he's on his way home now though. And I might try and do a bit of gardening. I should be drawing, really. Oh, one thing I did want to add, a few weeks ago I mentioned my accountant Talmo, he's amazing, highly recommend him if you're moving to a different country and need help with your taxes, and he has recently written an article all about taxes within the EU, so I know a few of you are thinking of moving out of the UK, so I just wanted to share that in the uh, there's, there'll be a link in the description to that just as a, an extra thank you to him for how much he's helped me and I think it might be of interest to some of you. It is very intelligent writing <laughs> about taxes but I think that he kind of breaks it down nicely and so yeah, please do check it out if that's something that would be useful for you and I hope it is. It's been a very hot day, I feel like it's back to summer almost. Again, we're both Bird has always got something to say. We're both heading up to Andre's winery this morning to just help finish off packing up some of the bottles. So I'm gonna leave the vlog here. I just wanted to say if you are interested in Calm Lines, it's launching on Wednesday the 4th of October, which is also my 34th birthday, and there's gonna be a little YouTube channel for that and I have a Substack newsletter that I'll be giving all the updates on so I'll leave all the links to that in the description if you are interested and want to check it out it's going to be all about drawing I especially want to encourage people who feel that they can't draw to use drawing as like a calming meditative practice so yeah if that sounds of interest to you please do please do go and check it out. I'm really excited to launch that. So yeah, uh, otherwise I think that's it. It's been kind of a busy week for us outside of what we filmed, but I hope you enjoyed spending some time in the garden with us. I'm really looking forward to that all growing. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Have a really good weekend. Bye.